Uh, I just about managed to get this upstairs. Uh, it's still, <laughs> it still must be weighing about 35, 40 kilos. Uh, blimey. And it's a bit awkward to carry, but here we are. Um, let's orientate ourselves around this. This is the front section. Uh, so the cassette transport mechanism was uh, bolted on, onto the front of this. So the imaging plate would be fed in there. Um, you can just see one of the rollers in there. Um, I can't really give you a tour of this um, before I start taking it apart because it's just too big to move around. So uh, you're just going to have to see bits as I slowly disassemble it. Here we have one of the main control boards. I think this is actually the, the main control board itself, uh, given that there does actually seem to be a Dallas real-time clock on there and stuff. So I think that is the main controller. Um, I'll take that off and have a look at that in a minute. Then under this metal plate, we've got um, a whole load more um, control boards inside. Um, we've got the optical assembly on the top and various bits around on the back. So I think what I'm going to do is take out all these parts here uh, so then I can actually lay it face down flat and we can actually have a look at the back of it. Right, so inside here we have uh, three control boards. Um, um, this is the Galvo controller. The Galvo is a small device around the back there. I'll talk about that in a moment. So that's the control board for the Galvo. Uh, this board is Micro CR Digitizer Controller Board. Um, so that's obviously doing the um, the digital to, uh, sorry analog to digital conversion. Um, there's an Altera Flex FPGA on there. Um, got a number of connections down to it. There's a larger board underneath, and there is actually another Dallas Timekeeper clock on there as well. So there's obviously um, a fair bit of processing going on on that board to have, need to have that. Um, one thing I have noticed is there's um, just buckets and bucket loads of these um, ferrites uh, on all of the cables. Um, they're just everywhere. I've already taken off about five of them from some of the other bits. Um, they are everywhere. You've got one there on the, the flat, the IDC cable. Um, so let's take out these boards uh, and then we can sit it flat and we can have a look at the interesting side on the back. Um, on second look at this board, I think this is probably the main processing board. Uh, I can't quite see the number yet, but there's um, a Freescale um, MC uh, something. So, and there is a number of RAM RAM chips on here. So I think this is probably the, uh, the main processing board. So. And it looks like we've got a compact flash card on the back, uh, presumably to store the uh, the system on it. And I guess from uh, this view, you're starting to get a size of the uh, um, the chassis on this. It's absolutely enormous, huge, great big cast piece of uh, aluminium with uh, um, lots of really nice sections being machined out. Okay, I've just got this tilted forward now so we can actually have a look at the optical components. And I can speak a little bit about how these actually work. So down at the base here, we have the slot where the imaging plate comes out. Um, the, the way that these actually detect the image that's stored onto the imaging plate is uh, they scan a red laser across it. Um, that's this unit here. There's a laser module here. Uh, the optical path that comes through here, there's a couple of lenses. Um, there is actually just here a, a little filter that can be placed into the beam line. Um, that is there for servicing. Uh, so if anybody's working on this with the laser on, um, they can move this 
uh, filter in front of the uh, laser beam uh, to actually reduce its intensity, so to make it a little bit safer. Uh, so that travels into this unit here, um, and this part here, this is a Galvo. Um, this is essentially just a motor with a mirror on, and it basically creates the scan. So out of this lens here, you have a scan which is going backwards and forwards, uh, which is then reflected by this mirror down and onto the imaging plate. Um, the imaging plate, when it's actually hit by the red laser, it, it exposes or it allows you to see the image that was exposed on it um, originally, um, but it comes out as blue light. So that is then picked up by two uh, large photo multipliers. Um, I can see the large just by the uh, these um, socket arrangements here. Those are for some pretty big photo multipliers. Why there's two, I'm not entirely sure. Um, there's obviously a good reason for that. Um, hopefully we'll find out when we get into that section. Now a couple of people mentioned when I did the part one of this that uh, this lens and galvo arrangement is actually quite special and um, it does appear as though that is the case. Um, this is probably an F theta lens um, and that is particularly used in this kind of application where you have a scanning laser and you want the laser to be in focus at all points across a flat plane like we have here on uh, when an image plate runs through. So um, F theta lens, especially designed for keeping um, a laser beam in focus when it's scanning across a flat surface. Uh, right, so if I tilt this up a little bit, you can also see this mirror arrangement here. Um, this is on a lovely um, adjustable um, system. So there's an adjustment wheel there that tilts tilts the mirror backwards and forwards so um, it allows you to position the resulting uh, scanned laser um, into the right the right area on down on the imaging plate. I should also point out that there's still more of these uh, ferrite blocks on the cables um, this particular one running to the laser module um, has actually three there's um, there's one down at the bottom here just off camera and then there's another two here Yep, there's the uh, lens, and maybe just inside there you can see a small circular mirror. That's the mirror that's attached to the Galvo. And you can just see there some of the laser specification. Uh, so 30.45 milliwatts, um, date code 11 1st, 2005, scan bow line. So we've got some power high, power low. So yeah, it's obviously con um, controllable in its um, output power. Right, so we just got this tilted back up onto its top. So uh, we have that adjustable mirror arrangement which bounces the beam down into um, down onto the imaging plate. Um, there's a small board here. This sat in line with the um, one of the control boards on the laser module, um, and it's called laser pre-reg board. A uh, little kind of an interesting little board that one. Um, there's just some diodes on it and an LM2991 um, on it. So I wonder whether there's some kind of afterthought on that. Okay, there's no tension left on that spring now. So there we have the, uh, the mirror arrangement. It's obviously not not completely reflective. Obviously it only needs to be reflective for the uh, frequency of uh, the laser, which is um, visible red. I'm not sure what the frequency was actually. Right, we're tipped forward again. Um, this is uh, the board that runs the photo multipliers. Um, there's obviously two of these. Um, and there doesn't seem to be anything mounting this board. So these, sh these pins here should be sockets which the photo multipliers plug into. So they should gently come off.
yeah, that certainly took care of that. Uh, and now we have the that big aluminium chassis there, free to shift out the way. Right, well, we're getting a little bit deeper into this now. So um, just at the front here, you have uh, a couple of more rubber rollers. Um, so the imaging plate would have come in the front here and then just sl slid under that uh, that metal plate just there and in, into the section which actually does the laser scanning and uh, the monitoring of the image that comes off the imaging plate. Um, it's looking quite cool in there. You see some nice fancy colours and stuff going on in there. There's a few access panels. We'll have those off in a moment. Um, like the um, eraser module, there was um, a, a servo motor to actually um, press the two rollers together. I think the same situation is here. Um, if I rotate the bottom roller, this roller, they're not actually pinching together at the moment. So there's obviously some uh, motor servo arrangement which clamps these down at the, at the right time. And down on this end here, we've got a belt drive system. Uh, so we've got a large motor underneath here, which provides the main transport mechanism. Um, I guess, uh, well, I have actually got the service manual for this, and it actually does describe that as slow scan. So um, it'll be a pr quite a precise control, um, controlled motor to actually be able to pull the imaging plate across at the uh, precisely the right speed um, that the laser is scanning at so it produces a, an accurate image. Um, so there's a, a rubberized drive belt here with a nice uh, tensioning wheel and uh, we've got a manual a manual knob here as well so I guess that's in case uh, an imaging plate jammed up or something you needed to manually feed it out. Some reflective uh, bits of tape on that. Got a small optical sensor just in there. Quite a cool coloured mirror that's actually glass. Uh, this part here is actually just plastic folded around a piece of aluminium. Uh, but this mirror arrangement, which is obviously being glued, you can possibly just see the, the glue marks on the back. That's been glued. glued on there. Interesting. Right, um, just trying to have a think about what this is actually doing. Um, we've got the two photo multipliers there. It obviously looks like um, they're just using one photo multiplier to do one side and the other one to do the other. So presumably they couldn't get this to work with one photo multiplier um, in such a compact space. So they've actually used two. Um, the Again, we've got a uh, plastic reflective film on this section here. But on, on here we have um, what look to be uh, mirrors, but they're also filters as well. Um, so they definitely have a blue tinge to them, um, as did that other piece. Now I think what is actually happening here, the um, obviously the, the laser is um, on all the time. It's a continuous wave laser, as far as I know. Um, and that is going to scan across and uh, make the imaging plate stimulate the, the blue light which is picked up by the photomultiplier. So I think what they're actually doing here, they're doing a little trick with the angles of the laser. So the photomultipliers um, are sort of somewhat more immune to the uh, red laser light than the, the blue light. So I think um, they're actually trying to absorb some of the reflected red light that comes off the scan. Um, so the photomultipliers see more of the blue light, which is actually the, the image that you actually want to see. At least that's my theory anyway. Mm. 
Yeah, they're not going to come out of that. Now I would have expected these to be uh, easily removable, to be honest, but uh, no. Looks like you have to take it all to pieces. Looks like they've got some filters on there as well. Um, very, very blue. So, some pretty trick looking photo multipliers there. Some nice uh, foam inserts in there. These are made by Burl, um, not our uh, friends at Hamamatsu this time. Uh, serial number five zero seven four three two five type S eight three zero seven nine EM five um, dated nineteenth um, of the ninth two thousand and five. Right, so if we have a look in the base of this, uh, we've got a couple of DC motors here on gearboxes, just like we saw in the um, erasing uh, module. Uh, these drive a couple of gears, and that probably. Um, applies the pressure to the pinch rollers to uh, pull the imaging plate through the system. Um, there's a couple of nice uh, tension wires and springs. Um, and here we have the main drive motor which looks pretty trick. Um, you don't normally see motors with a nice machined aluminium body like that so that'll be interesting to take off and see what, uh, what spec that is. Here we've got the main drive motor, um, certainly looks like an expensive bit of kit. Um, I think there is a, there's a rotary encoder or some description on the back just to provide some kind of feedback, but uh, yeah, that motor does look very, very nice indeed. Yeah, I can't see any uh, manufacturer markings or anything on it. There is a, there is a serial number there. Uh, but no, don't know who. No branding on that at all. Um, I mean, there is a this plate on here. Maybe there's something underneath it. But uh, you can see in there, there's um, you can actually see the coil windings in there. So that to me looks like it's part of the motor. So yeah, unless it's custom made for for this application. Right, I think that's the end of uh, this part. Um, there doesn't seem to be really much else in there. There's a few optical sensors, uh, position sensors. Uh, we've got those two motors um, which cam the pinch rollers together. Uh, as said before, a few tension tension springs, and that is it. It's really just sort of mechanical uh, mechanical stuff now. So let's put that to one side. Okay, the next thing to look at is this part. This uh, seems to be the eraser um, that uh, shines a light onto the uh, imaging plate and erases it. Uh, there does also seem to be some power supplies in the base here so it looks like, uh, well definitely yeah, we've got the mains input here so uh, we've got, obviously got the power supplies in here as well. So if we pop this on its end uh, we can start to see a little bit more so um, we have a uh, mains IEC cable coming out of here and that looks to be like the light source so I presume that'll come out, um, I'll get that out in a sec. Um, we've got a couple of connectors here, those connected through to the main system, so presumably carrying all the power. Um, we've got a, um, a belt drive arrangement here, a really loose belt on that, um, I'm quite sure why, why that would be like that. Uh, 
Okay, we can see in there we've got uh, just two fluorescent tubes. Um, those are Sylvania Deluxe 36 watts. Look fairly ordinary looking tubes to me. So it obviously just turns these on to um, expose the imaging plate to uh, the light that's in here. There's some uh, plastic reflectors in the back. Um, presumably in here is just the driver for those tubes. Um, Delta Electronics, so yeah, fairly common to make that. So uh, yeah, actually quite a nicely um, pressed aluminium chassis for that. So if we look down in there, which is where the, the light source used to be, you can see there's a sort of reflective back. Um, we've got um, a roller there, a sort of soft sponge. That would have taken the imaging plate as it had been coming out of the imaging area and fed into this and slowly passed up past the light source and uh, probably would have stuck out at the top here. Right, with those covers removed, we can start to see a bit what's going on in here now. Uh, we have uh, two power supplies. Um, this one is a Cosell PAA 100 F24. That's 24 volt, four and a half amps. Um, yeah, and this one is um, another 24 volt one. I can't quite see the label um, because it's around the other side, but it's 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 24 volts, but uh, I think it's only about two amps, so slightly smaller version of that. Um, we have the mains output here to go to the lamp. Um, presume that comes through some switch, which could well be that. Um, that looks like a, a small contactor. Um, we have a stepper motor over here to drive this, this belt. And I can actually also now see why um, this belt is so loose because there is um, a cam arrangement on the end here. Um, so this, unfortunately, this, this motor here, it's a, a DC motor with a gearbox on, so I can't actually turn it, but if I pop the belt off. I can actually operate the, there's a cam here which brings the which brings the two rollers together. Um, interesting though, uh, the belt is still pretty loose. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's really supposed to be, uh, if that's the right size, but there we go. So um, this motor here would operate this cam and squeeze these two rollers together. Uh, so what else do we have on here? Um, there is a small uh, optical sensor just here called uh, sensor detector board. Um, it's obviously just a photo diode on there. That was pointing up into the um, light box arrangement for the image erasing. So presumably that's just a, a sensor to, to detect that the light source is on um, and there isn't a, a tube out or something. And uh, over in the far corner there we have the mains IEC input uh, quite clearly with uh, mains input filtering built into it. Now, one other little detail I have just noticed is there is a small um, current transformer just here. Um, not quite sure if that's coming in directly off the mains input, but yeah, there's a small loop around here and two wires coming off, so that's a, a little current transformer. So they're obviously monitoring the overall power consumption of the, um, of the whole unit as well. Okay, the next bit to look at is the uh, cassette transport mechanism. There's actually not a huge amount to see on this really. Um, obviously you've just got motors to, um, there's one motor underneath, uh, a stepper motor which operates the side to side movement. Um, these two motors here drive these two cams, uh, but I'm not quite sure what they would have done. Um, the, yeah, without actually having a cassette here, I'm not quite sure um, when the cassette was pushed in, what these cams would have done in there, but uh, yeah. Uh, there is also this extra motor on this side, uh, which operates the pin, which is just down in here, which extracts the uh, imaging plate out of the cassette. And there's obviously, on the side of the cassette, there's a little spot where a pin can be inserted and then it draws it forward to pull out the imaging plate. There is a slightly better view of uh, the cassette would have slotted in here and you can see the P 
pin that can slide forward and you can also see these uh, funny cams yeah, if I can manage to turn one, there you go now if we look at the back of it which would have uh, mounted up against the um, the main optical section uh, we can see the uh, image plate would have come out of this slot just here there's also these um, these metal bands which as you close up the uh, the cassette size it also blocks off any light that might come through any of the gaps because of course it's all going to be light sensitive inside the imaging area um, we've got a couple of um, optical um, transmitters and receivers uh, we've got a transmitter there so there's uh, one two three four points on these two boards which shine through to these photo diodes on the top so that's probably detecting the cassette size now if we look down in the end we can obviously see some uh, probably some quite nice linear bearings just there those are probably a good one to salvage out and um, small little detail the uh, the actual mounting point of these these transport arms here um, are actually bolted onto this slide here but they're actually mounted on a, a triangle shape with a, just a couple of small screws in the top and it does actually allow a bit of compliance there interesting how they've done that on a little the uh, the metal is actually machined out so uh, it forms a small little triangle at the top so it does actually mean it's slightly compliant uh, I should say that this on its own it is actually there's probably a good uh, 10 kilos in that. Um, the uh, base here is just a, um, a cast piece of aluminium, fairly chunky with, uh, with some steel plates and stuff on it. So, uh, I mean, you could easily stand on this and it uh, would be absolutely fine. Right, let's have a quick look at some of these circuit boards that came out. Um, this one is labelled as a motor controller board. Um, this had the uh, connection to the main drive motor and some of the other ones as well I can't remember which um, but yeah most of the motors um, so what we've got on here uh, there's a couple of Cypress chips there we've got a little power module there uh, 5 volt so it's a little um, 5 volt regulator board I might, I might desolder that that might be handy one handy one to keep um, yeah, not a lot to see. There's a tiny little switch there, a couple of status LEDs. Um, you got a little fuse there um, in a nice little surface mount uh, socket, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, not a lot to see on that. Uh, so this was one of the control boards. Uh, this was in the front. Um, there was um, quite a few motors attached to this, wasn't there, if I recall. So, yeah, we've got some power supply stuff over here, it looks like. Um, yeah, it looks like there's a power module there. We've got a couple of relays. That is an MC68HC16Z. Um, so that's going to be a 68,000 microcontroller-based microcomputer thing uh, sort of system on a chip kind of thing um, looks like we've got some got some flash RAM there um, we have a Dallas non-volatile RAM in a socket nice to see that they put it in a socket um, this is getting on for what's the date code on that 21st week 2005 so that's probably getting to the point where that'll be going flat uh, looks like we've got something in a little zip socket just there uh, various power these look like motor controllers uh, yeah not a whole lot doing on there let's have a look see what is actually in here Yeah, looks like looks like we've got a flash or a some kind of um, programmable memory. Presumably holding some of the firmware or 
boot code or something. Interesting they've put it gone to the expense of actually putting in putting it into a um, a zip socket. Quite impressive. That socket certainly wouldn't have been cheap. Right, having a look at the uh, these two boards, um, we've got the Micro CR Digitizer controller board. So this would have controlled the um, scanning of the laser, um, coupled with the um, the motor transport that uh, fed the imaging plate through the system. So this would have talked to that motor control board, I would imagine. Uh, also the acquisition from the photo multiplier outputs as well. So um, quite an important section, this one. So we've got this board here attached to this one here, which is called MCPU board. Um, we're on a mezzanine connector and a little pass-through connector running over to uh, the Galvo control board, which controls the um, position of the laser scanning. Got another um, ferrite um, over the cable there. Certainly got plenty of these from a stockpile now. Uh, so it looks like we've got a bit of power supply stuff up there. We've got another one of these um, little power modules. Um, that's five volt, um, an Altera Flex um, FPGA. Um, the Galvo board, a bit slightly annoyed by this. I was hoping that it might have been using an off-the-shelf Galvo controller board because um, it would have meant that uh, I could have powered up that Galvo and had to play around with the laser scanning, but uh, this might be a bit more tricky. Um, so, yeah, um, we've got another, we've got an Altera Max on there. I'm just looking at this uh, main control board. Got another Dallas real-time clock. Uh, probably some programmable logic just in there. Power supply section. Um, got that. Uh, another. Uh, s sorry, it's an MPC eight six zero TZQ five zero D four. Presumably some kind of um, microcontroller, microcomputer thing. Um, got some memory just in there. Uh, we have the uh, this PCM CIA slot mounted on there, which is quite nice. So even this uh, PCM CIA card adapter is uh, mounted in its uh, lovely little plug and socket arrangement. I certainly didn't worry about how much things were going to cost. Uh, we've got a few more of these uh, power modules. We've got 12 volt one there, 3.3, uh, and I can't quite see that one, but I'm guessing that one's going to be 5 volts. And the last board to look at is the, this uh, photo multiplier board. Um, so we've got the main connectors up at the end here. Uh, we've got some Burr Brown devices there. They look like some kind of optical isolators of some description. Um, so. Yeah, we'll have a load of analog control um, stuff here to control the voltages uh, to the photo multipliers. And there will be an analog to digital converter somewhere. Um, that looks like power supply over there. Um, just there, we have um, analog devices. So uh, I bet any money that's the analog to digital converter. And then that's, uh, once that's set into a digital stream, it goes out over here and off over to the FPGA board. An AD7677AST. And yes, that is the ADC. It's a 16-bit, uh, one mega samples per second, um, both the serial and parallel um, outputs. Yep. And finally, um, the last thing to look at is the laser module. Um, so we have the laser diode and driver board on the end here. That's nicely mounted in there. Lens, we have the filter that you can drop in place if you're working on it and you need to reduce the laser intensity. Uh, another lens, uh, this runs into this block here which has the galvo and the mirror inside it. So it's just an aperture just down in there. So that will scan the, uh, the mirror like that, and produce a, a beam coming out of here um, that scans backwards and forwards. And then we have the lens arrangement. Um, as I said, this is presumably a F-theta lens. And here we've got the laser driver board. 
um, on the back of the laser module. So obviously most of this is heat sinking, so presumably it does get fairly warm. Um, some bodge wires going on down there. Now hopefully um, I can figure out some of the connections and actually get this laser to power up. But I'll do that in a future video. And just here we have the Galvo, and just possibly just in uh, in there you should be able to see the edge of the mirror and um, the connections to it up the top here and the actuator. So this is made by Cambridge Technology. Um, model number 6810P-517. Now, um, I actually want to try and find out a little bit more about this lens, which means I'm going to have to take it out of its mounting and see if there's any branding or something on the other side of it, I don't know. No, there's no markings on it at all. Yeah, so unfortunately there's no markings on this at all, but uh, I mean, I can't, un I can't think that it wouldn't be an F-theta lens, uh, given that it's what it's been used for. Um, If anybody knows how to tell what it is, uh, let me know. Right, thanks for watching everybody. We have reached the end, there is no more to see. Um, thanks for watching, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.